Hey guys, it's Matt with AppleMediaCenter.com and today's tutorial is all about installing and configuring SickBeard for use with SAB NZBD Plus. If you do not uh, have SAB NZBD Plus installed yet, click this button that just popped up and go to that tutorial first because you need it. If you've done it already though, we can jump right in. Uh, this is a seven section tutorial. There are seven different parts with two extra sections and um, we're going to start with section one right now. The first is installing Cheetah. In order to begin, we have to install Cheetah. And um, to do this, we have to go to www.cheatemplate.org forward slash download.html. First thing you want to do is download the most stable recent release, which is right here. You're going to click this Downloads button, and then you're going to click this button right here. I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to download it again. Um, and when you've done that, we can kind of get rid of that program. We're going to go to our Downloads folder where we have downloaded Cheetah. And there it is right there, un unpacked and we're going to begin um, installing it. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the terminal application and it's in your applications folder but the easiest way to do it in my opinion is just to go to the um, spotlight menu type in terminal and okay there's a lot of stuff in here you know what you're not going to see that I'm going to close that out and open a new window most likely if you've never used terminal before you're going to see a blank window like this and uh, what we're going to do and I'm following along with uh, the online tutorial as well, so you can. Pre I'm pretty much going through it just as you would if you were reading it for the first time. And what we're going to do here is very simply. Uh, let's see. We're going to go reading, 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 reading. Okay. In terminal, we're going to go. We're going to type cd. We're going to add a space, and then we're actually going to drag Cheetah, the folder, into this terminal window, and then we're going to hit enter. What that allows us to do is it actually brings terminal into that folder. That's why it says Cheetah. 2.4.4. Um, now what we're going to do, since we're technically in the folder, what we want to do is type sudo python setup.py install, or you can copy paste it as it is in the tutorial. So I'm going to hit enter. It's asking for my password. Now OSX is a very secure environment, so it's, uh, it's asking for my password, but it won't actually show anything. So I'm going to type it in right now, and I hit enter, and it's installing. It only takes a few seconds, and as you can see right here at the bottom, finish processing dependencies for Cheetah. Perfect. Um, we're going to actually, I believe, close out of this. We're just going to quit terminal. And that is the end of section one. We have just installed Cheetah. Section two is installing a program called Git. Not Git or done, just a program called Git. So we're going to go back into our web browser. I'm going to clear that out. We're going to go to this website, git s cm.com forward slash download and we're going to go on let's see we want it in OS oh, what am I saying I'm missing this whole thing right here um, we just want to download for OSX so click that it's going to go through and then you're going to want to click this one um, the the x I believe yeah the x86 uh, one it's it's for 64-bit operating systems most likely if you're on a core 2 duo or later that's a 64-bit operating system so you're going to click that it's going to go through here and then click one more time and then finally it'll, it'll allow you to download this program so I already downloaded it once again, so I'm actually just going to cancel out of that. I'm going to hide uh, Firefox again. Here is Git. Um, it's a disk image, so you're just going to open that up. Let that load. And then you're just going to double click right there. And install just as you would any other program. Click continue again, install. Type my password. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, there we go. Boom. Now git is installed, that's the end of section two. Now section three is really when we start getting to the meat and potatoes of this tutorial. We are actually going to install SickBeard right now. And the way we do this isn't uh, like installing an application. We're actually gonna do it uh, through terminal. So we're gonna go back into terminal, we're gonna go back and find it. It's still there, boom. Um, now it only, it, it's showing all the old stuff, but that's actually, it's just old. It's not like that is loaded information. But you know what, just to give a clean slate, I'm just gonna close this out. I'm going to go new window basic. So it's a nice, fresh, clean window. So what we want to do um, is type cd space. And then what you want to do is find the folder that you want to install SickBeard into. Now, it's my recommendation that you install it in your applications folder. Reason being, that's where all your other applications are. Um, it's just a simple way to have everything in the one place. So I'm in my hard drive. I double click my hard drive. And right here, of course, I've got my applications folder. We typed cd space. I'm just going to drag my applications folder right into there and then just hit enter. So now once again you can see I'm in my applications folder here. 
Now what we want to do, and you can, you can copy paste this if you're reading along with the tutorial, is uh, type the following. Git clone git colon forward slash forward slash github.com midget spy. I know it sounds very weird, but this is what it is. Midget spy forward slash. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, sick hyphen beard dot git. And then all you're going to do is hit enter. Now a bunch of stuff's going to load. It's actually going on the internet right now and downloading all of the corresponding files. And because we're doing it this way by going by doing the git method, we're actually getting the most recent version of the software. So this is a very good way to do it. Um, and as you can see right here, done 100%. We're done here. Um, well, technically we're done here. We're not done just yet. Still in this window, we're not going to close it out. We're going to type cd forward slash, excuse me, not, not forward slash, cd space sick beard. And the reason we're typing it like this, just to kind of explain things for you if you're not a, uh, an expert person on this, um, we installed it in the applications folder and you'll find it right here. And you can see it's sick hyphen beard. So we want to type it just like that. Hit enter and now we're in the sick beard folder, as you can see right there. Once we're in the sick beard folder, we're going to type the following. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, basically turn on sick beard. It's not a regular program. It's not as simple as just double clicking. You have to, you have to do this almost every time um, you restart your computer because this is the way, unfortunately, you do things. You're going to get into the folder, um, which we're in right now, as you can see, sick beard. And then you're going to type python sickbeard.py. You're going to hit enter. And what that's going to do, it's actually going to turn on Sickbeard. And then boom, Sickbeard is now open. It's installed. It's working. However, we haven't configured it yet. So where we are right now is actually at the uh, end of section three. It's installed. And now we're going to move on to configuring Sickbeard. Now I'm going to hide the terminal for this next section. I'm going to minimize that. OK, so section four is all about configuration. Now there's a lot to do here. And um, you don't really need to understand everything I'm telling you. Just understand that this is the kind of the best way to do things if you want to stay very organized. Um, so what we're going to do is deal with, we're going to begin with our config menu right here. And we're going to just going to start in general. And I kind of just want you to follow along as to what I'm doing. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for everybody to see. Okay, there we go. Now in the MISC section, we're not going to touch a thing. But what we are going to do over here in the web interface section is we're going to create a username and password so that when um, you want to access Sickbeard, uh, it's not just anybody can access it when they're at your house or if you have other options enabled where you can configure it outside your wireless network. You don't want people to just be able to add shows or basically get into your system because technically they'd be on your computer. So I'm going to make a really simple um, username, AMC. This can be anything you'd like. It doesn't have to be your OS OSX username. Anything you want to be to remember. Personally, I like to make it the exact same thing as my SAB NZBD installation. Just really easy to understand everything. And I'm going to put in my very basic password. And I'm going to hit Save Changes. That's it for this section. This one, uh, the config general section. As you can see right here, it's saved. Now we're going to go back up, config, and we're going to go to search settings. So in search settings, there are a couple of things we want to do. Uh, download properties, when we've checked. Search frequency. This is really up to you. Uh, I'm going to leave it as 15 minutes. So that way, Sickbeard is basically searching every 15 minutes. If you, I mean, shows pretty much come out after 8 o'clock at night. So most of the day, it's going to be searching and finding nothing. Um, but you never know because while, let's say, shows air from 8 to 10, it might not pop up on the internet until, you know, the next morning. So I, I just like to have it at 15 minutes. You can do it less or more um, depending on how aggressive you want to be, but 15 is a good amount. Usenet retention, if you know it, uh, put it in. I think for power usenet, it's something insane like 1,000, so I'm going to leave it like that. And then down here, this is, this is the meat and potatoes right here, NDB search. The way um, this, this basically helps us talk to, to SAB NZBD. So we're going to change it from black hole to SAB NZBD. And it's asking us for the URL of our SAB NZB installation. And you're going to most likely, I don't know why you wouldn't, have all of your Sickbeard, SAB, NZBD on one computer. So what this is going to be is just localhost 8080. If you uh, did the last tutorial, that's exactly what it's going to be. Now you want to put your username 
for SAB NZBD, which as I was saying earlier, I just use the same username, same simple password. And then you need to go get your API key. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open a new window and we're gonna just type in localhost 8080, just like that. And now we're in our configuration of uh, SAB NZBD. And the way you find your API key, which is what we're looking for right here, we're gonna go to the config menu in SAB, general, and then we're just gonna scroll down here, copy that, that's your API key. Not the NZB key, this is your API key, that's what you want. So we're gonna copy that, we're gonna close this window, and we're going to just paste that in there, perfect. And your category should be set to TV. I mean, if there's no reason it wouldn't be set to TV, but I'm just saying that's what you want, because we're gonna explain that a little bit later. And torrent search, listen, you got Usenet, so you can get away from torrents, we don't need that. So we're just gonna hit save changes. Give it a second. Okay, it's been saved. Beautiful. Now we're going to config search providers. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Um, the nice thing is you don't have to have any of these providers because Sickbeard has kindly added the Sickbeard index, um, which basically is a, a search repository where it finds all the shows. I don't know how it works. Don't care how it works. It works. I'm going to uncheck w Wombles index and I'm going to check Sickbeard index. Now, if you have an NZB Matrix account, which I do have and I highly recommend it, you'd go down here, you'd check that off, you'd go down here, and you'd check uh, NZB Matrix, and you'd put your username and API key. We're going to get to that in a different tutorial. But um, right now, we don't, we're not going to even bother with that. We're just going to leave Sickbeard Index checked and hit Save Changes. That's it. That's it for this little provider section. And it's saved. Now we're going to go to Post Processing. And this is where, uh, this is something it's, it's kind of simple to understand once you just kind of go through the motions. Um, I think you should definitely go, do the, what I'm going to tell you to do because it's uh, a very good and easy way to get things done. It's very uh, organized this way. But later on, if you're feeling a little bit more ambitious and you want to tweak things a little bit more, you can play with this section a bit more once you uh, read through it. Basically, it's how what we're going to do with the files. What we're going to do once they've downloaded, are we going to get rid of any of them, and how we rename them. So in this section, post-processing, we're not going to touch TV download directory at all. We're actually going to uncheck keep original files. And that might sound counterintuitive. What that actually does is that when you download your files, you have a ton of extra files, like there's an info file, an SFV file, maybe an image file of some sort. Um, we actually just want to get rid of it. all of that crap, including the main source file, but after it's moved it to the right folder, which this, it takes care of it all, so we don't actually need to worry about any of that. But just uncheck that, otherwise you'll have lots of duplicate files floating around your computer and your hard drive will fill up very, very quickly. Uh, keep that unchecked, move associate files. We want to leave rename episodes checked, that's kind of the very important part of this. And scan and process, we'll leave that unchecked. We're going to skip the entire metadata section. I'm not going to delve into this. If you feel like searching for stuff, you can, you can do that. I'm going to leave that out entirely. And I'm going to come down here to episode naming. And this is where you can kind of tweak things in the future. But this is, I'm going to go through what my setup is. And it, uh, it's a good setup. I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. So for post-processing, um, we want to keep the show name. So it'll keep a show name in the title of the file. Keep the episode name. Um, so if you have like, I don't know, uh, an episode of Seinfeld, it would say the nip slip or something. It's, it's nice to have it all in there. Use periods, so basically if you have use periods checked, it would have, instead of spaces, periods. I don't like that, I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Quality, I'm gonna leave that unchecked as well. Air by date, I don't actually have any shows that are like this, but if you download The Daily Show, that's a show that comes out almost every single day. You wouldn't have a season, an episode number, you just have the day, so that's why they have that over here like that. So I'm just gonna leave that checked for the off chance that I have that. Separator style, this is what will separate the episode numbers from the name. Uh, a space is fine, but I like a hyphen. And for number style, personally, I enjoy this uh, second one, the lowercase s and e with the, the two, two numbers for the uh, season and episode. And this is an example of what it'll look like. I'm going to leave multi-episode style as extend. And this is very important to me, I think. You want to get rid of this two in season. I'm just going to highlight that, get rid of it. What that does when it makes season folders is it'll actually add two spaces for some reason. Uh, between the word season and the season number, and that just drives me nuts. So we're going to remove that, just re remove the two, and then hit save changes. And it's saved. And in this last section, config notifications, we don't have anything to do there. That's pretty much it. 
So we've actually completed section four. Um, now what we want to do is move on to section five, which is getting Sab NZBD to talk to Sickbeard with some scripts. So I'm actually going to, um, let's see, am I going to hide this window? Yeah, I'm just going to hide all this. And uh, I'm going to show you where you need to go. Now, one quick thing here. If you're running OSX Lion, you will not have your library, which is this folder right here. You will not have that um, shown by default. It's a new feature. I don't know why they do it, but it's a, it's a feature to save people from hurting their own systems. You'll actually need to like either Google or read the note at the bottom of the entire tutorial on, sat, on Sickbeard, and you'll understand how to, um, excuse me, no, this, on this section. It'll tell you how to enable the library. Anyway, so what we want to do, I'm actually going to open two windows so I can demonstrate everything very easily for you guys. Um, two completely separate windows, doesn't matter. Okay, what we need to do is go into Sickbeard and bring some script files that were included in the Sickbeard installation and move it into the SAB NZBD uh, application support folder. So let's see here. So applications in this window, because this is where I've got Sickbeard. Actually, I'm just going to do one at a time. So Sickbeard, I'm going to go open. We're going to go to this file called autoprocess.tv, this folder. I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to just leave that as is. Oh, there's a dog in my hallway who's barking. Um, then in this section over here, we're actually going to go into your user folder. So your user, um, yeah, your home folder. You're going to go into library, which by now you should have uh, activated. We're going to go into application support. You're going to go into SAB NZBD. And then there should be a scripts folder. If you don't see it, um, just make one lowercase s scripts. But uh, if you do see it, great. We're going to open that up. And I'm going to select these guys. I'm going to go to edit, copy four items, and go into this folder. And I'm going to paste those items. And it seems like an awfully long time to copy five kilobytes. And there we go. It's only an i5 iMac. I don't know why it would take that long. OK, so now what we want to do is have Sickbeard communicate with SAB NZBD. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this file, the autoprocesstv.cvg.sample, and we're going to actually just remove the dot sample at the end. We're just going to delete that, hit enter. Uh, this could happen. It might say, you know, are you sure you want to change the extension from sample to that CFG? The answer is yes, you do. If that doesn't pop up, don't worry about it. No big deal. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to double click this file and it opened up in text edit for me. Sometimes it'll say uh, Mac OS X cannot find a program that works to open this file. Just point it, it'll just say choose application, point it at um, text edit, and it will open no problem. So I'm going to close this scripts folder. What we want to do with this folder, with this, uh, this text document, is just add in our username and password. Now, my username and password are the same for SAB NZBD and um, excuse me, and Sickbeard. So I'm just going to type that in, AMC, and then my super secret password is uh, 890089. And we're going to leave Webroot as it is. And we're going to go File, Save a Version. And that's it. We're going to close that up. So that is the end of Section 5. Wait, I lied. That's not the end of Section 5. <laughs> that's the beginning of Section 5. Um, now we're going to go back into not Sickbeard, but what we're going to do is go back into SAB NZBD. So I'm going to go localhost, go back here. And this is, where I'm going to basically show you what we just did. Uh, you're going to go into the config menu here. You're going to go into categories. And you should have a category that says TV, just like that. If you don't, just add it right there. You know, you can add any, any number of categories you want. And then you're going to change this um, from default. It probably will show up as default to SAB to Sickbeard. That's it. So you have a TV, SAB to Sickbeard. Don't worry about priority or processing or any of this stuff. That's all you want. TV in the category, script, SAB to Sickbeard.py. And then hit save. And now you are done with section five. So section, section six is actually starting to get into downloading shows or really getting into getting Sickbeard to work so you can eventually get shows. So we're going to go back to Sickbeard, which is um, localhost 8081 for us. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add the shows we have. The first thing you want to do is have it figure out what shows you actually already have on your computer so that it doesn't, one, so that it just gets them automatically, and two, so that it's just easier for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Add Shows. This is quite simple. And we're going to add existing shows. Now, I have one directory of shows, and that's on my external hard drive called Monolith right here. These are my three shows I have on here. I have a lot more on my other computer, but just for demonstration purposes, I have these three shows. And um, what I'm going to do is add this directory of shows to Sickbeard. So I'm going to click New, and I'm going to scroll down to Volumes. Now, I'm going to do this for, I'm going to go to Volumes because it's an external hard drive. If it's an internal hard drive, you wouldn't go to Volumes. You'd go to Users, you'd find your username, which for me um, would be Apple Media Center, and then you'll go to wherever your folder is with all your TV shows. It could be in movies, it could be anywhere. It could be on your desktop, it could be in your downloads folder, wherever you keep your shows. But since I have an external hard drive, I'm going to go here to Volumes. And then on, um, for some reason it's showing two, but this is Monolith, not Monolith 1. So I'm just going to click Monolith, and it's got all these files and you can't see, they're invisible files. And then you've got my movies, TV, and Usenet. So I'm going to click on TV. And I'm not going to go into any of these folders. I'm just going to leave it in this main TV folder and then hit OK. If you have your TV shows in several different locations, on your computer, the internal hard drive, on an external hard drive, you can, you can add numerous locations and it'll manage all of those. But most of us are only going to have one. I only have one for this tutorial. So that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm just going to scroll down here. And as you can see, it's saying I'm displaying the folders from these directories. I only have one directory, which is this TV directory. And then it's showing the folders. These are not the shows. It doesn't know what shows I have just yet. It's just showing the, the folder names right here. So everything looks good. I'm going to hit Submit. So now what it's going to do, it's going to go through each show and ask me, is this the right show? What do you want me to do with it? So the first show it came up with is Angry Boys. And it says, here's your search result. Only one option. There's only one checkbox here. And we'll get to why that makes a difference in a second. But as you can see, one checkbox. I'm going to go to Next because everything looks good. And then it's saying, okay, we're going to add the show, Angry Boys, into this folder. As in, we understand this is the show and that's where you want us to put the files, which looks good to me. I'm going to go Next again. And now it's saying, okay, now that we know what show you have and where this particular show goes, what exactly do you want me to do with the show? And the initial status of the missing episodes is assuming you have missing episodes. Now I actually have every episode of the show in this folder already, so what I'm going to do is leave it as skipped because there are no new shows coming up and um, there's no reason to do anything else. Your other options though are wanted, archived, and ignored. The only two you really need to focus on though are skipped and wanted. Skip means skip it. Wanted means I want it. So this is not a show that I actually need ongoing episodes for, so I'm just going to leave it as skipped. I'm not going to bother checking season folders um, because it's actually a one season show. And this is the, the quality that I, I would want it in if it was still downloading. And um, the options are custom, standard definition, high definition, and any. Custom is something that we go into in the text tutorial. I read about that to really understand that. Uh, SD is just standard definition. It's a lower quality, but uh, still, still very good. High definition is about three times the file size of standard definition, and it's an HD. And any will grab either the standard definition or H, uh, high definition version, whichever comes first. Most likely it's the standard definition. I'm going to leave that as SD. And then we're going to go add show. And then it's going to immediately kick me into the next show. Now I'm actually going to interrupt myself here. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to interrupt myself. I'm going to just go right ahead. It's, this is saying it can't find my show. I'm going to say, you know what? No big deal. We're just going to skip this show. And I'm, going to, I'm actually going to get into this a little bit later. This is, I believe, extra one where I say, yeah, extra one is Sickbeard can't find my show. And um, I'll explain how to find your shows in the next uh, coming section. Hold on. Okay, now the third show I have is Louie. It's saying search results, Louie. Um, looks good to me. Next. Right folder. Fantastic. Next. Set the initial status of missing episodes. I'm going to leave this as wanted because I don't think the season is over just yet. And I'm going to click season folders. I actually have season folders already, but no big deal. I'm just going to leave it as that. Standard definition sounds good to me. And add show. 
So what it's doing now is it's showing the shows I have, it's showing the number of episodes I actually have. As I said, Angry Boys, I had all the episodes. Um, and then with Louie, I have, it looks like I'm missing one episode. If I click on this, it'll say which one I'm missing. Um, okay, I'll actually get to that in a second. I'm gonna go back to the main screen here. So that's how you add your existing shows. Now let's say you wanna add a new show. It's very easy to do, and as you'll see, it's very, very cool how quickly it works. Uh, what's going on here? It says I'm downloading something. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't even have to do anything. I just added the show. I said I wanted the, the future episodes. And you know what? In the last 30 seconds, it actually went ahead and grabbed it. I'm actually going to pop open NZ, um, Sab NGB so you can see. All I did was add the show. It knew that I was missing this last episode, and boom. It went in, and it immediately found it online. Um, and started downloading it. And this is actually quite, it's, it's going to take nine minutes to go, so I don't know if I want to let it go for nine more minutes, but basically what it's going to do when it's done, since we set all those settings up, is that it's going to take the show. I'm going to go right here. So since I have everything set up from Sab and DBD to put my uh, incomplete files here, it's going to take this file right here once it's done. It's going to take all these little files. It's going to decompress them all. It's not going to put it in the complete folder. It's actually going to rename it and put it into season two so it looks like these files. This one, who knows what happened there, but that's how it'll look in the end. And this is going to happen automatically for this episode, any future episodes, and in a year's time when they have a new season, it'll just do it automatically for that too, which is very cool. But you know what? I'm actually not too concerned about this, right? I'm going to pause that. I'm going to go back to Sickbeard. We're going to add a new show. I want to add, let's say, um, I feel bad for saying this, but I'm going to say, let's add Jersey Shore. Uh, okay, so it found the Jersey Shore. It started on this date. Looks good. I'm going to go next. It's saying, where do you want me to save this? We don't have a, a, a folder named Jersey Shore just yet. So it's saying, hey, where do you want me to save this? Should I make a folder called Jersey Shore? The answer is yes. And as you're going to see right here, when I click, um, after I set the next thing and add show, it's going to just add a folder immediately. So I'm going to hit next. And then this is an important screen when you're adding a new show. And I'll explain why. Uh, I have none of these episodes on this computer. But let's say I've already seen seasons one, two, and three. I don't want to tell my computer, hey, download every single episode. What I'm going to do is to say, you know what? Leave it as skipped. I don't, I don't want you to get all the episodes. Um, I'm not going to bother checking a season folder. I want it in standard definition because I don't think they have it in high definition. And then I'm going to click Add Show. So what it's going to do is it's going to add the show, but it's not going to try to get any of the episodes yet. Right now it's actually still um, trying to find out information on the shows. Okay, so it's done. So it's got Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, all this extra stuff. I only want Season 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check this. I'm going to say, you know what? Change selected episodes to Wanted. And within seconds it should just try to find them all on the internet and just start downloading them. So I'm going to do this, click go, it changed it, immediately made a folder called Jersey Shore right here. I'm going to go into this folder right here, I'm going to go to Sab, and boom, it already started downloading Season 4 After Hours. Let's see, did you get anything else? I'm just going to keep hitting reload. Doesn't seem to be finding anything else just yet. I'm only giving it about 10 seconds, but... Okay, you know what? We're going to let that go. I'm going to let that go. It's going to automatically go and try to start to download every single episode, though. And if it can't get them all right now, you know, it might wait a couple minutes and it'll keep trying again later. So that's it. That's how you install Sickbeard. It's how you clear up things as far as um, adding the shows you have and adding a new show and figuring out what you want and what you don't want. But um, there's a little bit more, and this is kind of an extra section. And... We're going to get into the show that I uh, was going to add and then didn't add, which is David Attenborough's, uh, excuse me, BBC, David Attenborough's Madagascar, which is a show that I have on the computer right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to go add shows. I'm going to go add existing show. I didn't, I didn't add this one right here, Madagascar. And I'm going to show you why it had a bit of an error. I'm going to hit submit again. It's trying to find the show. It didn't find the show. And the reason is, it's the wrong name. Now, uh, Sickbeard, as smart as it is, doesn't have a directory of all the, the TV shows. It actually goes somewhere to find them. 
and that directory is the tvdb.com. Let me move that over here. While that's loading, let's see, did you get anything else? Still just got that one episode, hmm. Okay, so, TVDB. I'm going to take this episode right here, BBC, David Attenborough's Madagascar. I'm going to paste that into the search bar because I want to find out why it's not showing up. And it's going to tell me, hey, it doesn't exist. Okay, well, I know it's a real show. I watched it. It's a great show. I'm going to try to, to start small then. I'm going to say, you know what, let's go with just Madagascar. I'm going to take that. I'm going to type it in there. See what I come up with. A lot of different options, some about penguins in different languages, and you got Madagascar, and then some more stuff about penguins. You know what, I think it's going to be this one, Madagascar. And sure enough it is, as you can see with narration by David Attenborough. This is the show I have. This is the show I have and the show I want. So it turns out I just had it named incorrectly. The, na the name of the show that Sickbeard is searching for is Madagascar. So I'm going to go back to Sickbeard. I'm going to just type Madagascar. I'm going to do a search. And then, boom, I've got the Penguins of Madagascar and Madagascar. This is the one I want, this top option. So I'm going to leave that checked. I'm going to hit Next. It says, this is the folder, right? This is where you want me to save it. That's correct. Uh, I'm going to leave it as Wanted. I actually don't even know if there are any more episodes in this season. Uh, who cares? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it as Wanted. Screw it. And hit Add Show. It's going to take a second. I'm going to reload. And it found it. I'm actually missing an episode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here so that I've skipped this one. You know what? I want that. I'm going to click this button right here. It's going to start searching for that episode. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So that's that's extra one. Oh, I can't find that one. Well, that's a shame. Uh, and this is something, this is an example of sometimes NDB Matrix will have it and uh, the Sickbeard uh, search won't. That's why I think uh, Sickbeard search is very good, but NTV Matrix is an excellent website. It's got lots of stuff. I really do recommend you get a, a, an account there. So that was extra one, how, how can you uh, relocate your show. And extra two is how to prune your library. And the reason you want to do this is because, um, you know, a lot of the times we have shows such as Seinfeld that have ended a long time ago. They're never coming back. And it'll get added to your sick beard installation. It's just like it's going to do searches for them. It's never going to find anything new. So why waste your time and your computer's time trying to find something it's never going to find? So what we're going to do to get rid of extra shows that are ended, and it says it right here, ended, ended, is we're actually going to go and click, um, I believe, on Manage. None of these. You're just going to click on Manage. And it'll come up with an option like this. Or not an option, but a, a list like this. And I only have four shows listed here, but a lot of us are going to have a lot more shows. Maybe 20, 30, 40, 100. So I'm going to just sort by status so I get all the ended ones at the bottom. And I'm just going to go here to delete and I click those two and I'm going to hit submit. So what that did is it just deleted them out of Sickbeard, but it kept them in on our hard drive. So that way uh, when it does a search, it's not going for other, for trying to find all the other episodes. It just finds the shows that are actually active and still airing. And believe it or not, that's it. Once you've set everything up like we just did, you've got an active installation of Sickbeard that will just keep trying to find your uh, your files. It won't stop until it gets them all, and uh, you'll probably die before it finds them all, but <laughs> it'll do its darndest. I don't know why Jersey Shore is not loading any of those episodes for some reason. I think it has to do with the sick beard search, because I know that it does it for me every week, and I use NTV Matrix, but um, it, uh, it that's, that's basically what you need to do. You can add a million shows, and it'll just keep going through them all. It's false. So there are a lot of good uh, shows coming out, and you can just add them all very quickly. Never have to worry about when's my show on. They're all just going to show up on your computer um, pretty much immediately after they're done airing and downloading, which is, which is excellent. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that with Sickbeard you uh, can find all your old favorite shows and, and get to watch them. Have a great day.